So we also have the possibility of changing uh, exports through quite the opposite policy. That is to say, increasing exports rather than through a subsidy, for example. An export subsidy, which re increases the exports. Now, this is basically just the opposite of the export tax. When you promote exports by paying exporters, by paying firms to sell internationally, you clearly have two potential goals, at least. One is that you've got hard currency earnings. That is to say, the increased exports can increase the amount of this product that is, or the revenue of this product sold abroad. And this can result in hard currency, that is to say, convertible currency that can be used to buy imports and other products. And sometimes countries have that as a, a major goal, and so would potentially uh, want to subsidize exports in order to gain that, uh, gain that advantage. You clearly are going to be increasing the amount of production through the export subsidy, and that's going to help the companies that produce this product and the workers that are engaged in producing this product. So these are two of the, the reasons why one might want to pursue export subsidies. But, as in all policies, there's a downside. In this case, the downside is really the, the mirror image to the export tax. One, you're going to have inefficiencies, but in this time it's not going to be because you've, you're exporting too little, but you're really exporting too much. And you have a negative effect on consumers, as we will see that the domestic price tends to rise when you have an export subsidies. And you also have to take into account the impact of this export subsidy on the, the budget of a domestic government, because they've got to pay for this. And ultimately, taxpayers or, or, um, uh, or the government will borrow the money. But in one instance or another, the, the, there's going to be a downside from the, 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 the costs of providing the subsidy. So we're going to start out with a sm this is a small country example. So once again, we have an original world price, small country, so no matter what this country does, that's going to be the, the world price. We have an original level of exports, Q1 to Q2. And now we're providing a subsidy. That is to say, every unit that is sold abroad is going to get extra, an extra check from the government. Again, to go back to our example, let's say the price is $100, and the government is now willing to pay $10 to every unit that's exported. So every time a, a domestic firm sells this product abroad, they're going to get $100 from the foreigners plus $10 from the government. So that clearly is a benefit to selling this product abroad. Now, what, how does that affect domestic prices? It's very clear. If originally the price domestically was 100 and now firms can get 110 by selling it on the international market because of the subsidy, domestic consumers will not have access to this product. Domestic, domestic firms won't sell it to them unless the domestic consumers are willing to pay 110. Now this is assuming, of course, that you've got um, homogeneous products, but even if you had differentiated products so that you had a domestic and and foreign uh, products were slightly different, you would have a you would tend to have an increase in the price of the in the domestic market because of the subsidy. To keep it simple, we'll keep it as a homogeneous product, so the domestic price rises by the full amount of the subsidy. And consequently, because there's a higher price for sales at home and sales abroad you're going to have an increase in the amount that's produced domestically. And the increase in the price is going to reduce consumption to Q3. So now you have a new level of exports. It has been expanded by the subsidy, by the payment of selling abroad. So let's take a look at the effects on various groups. We have a consumer loss. The domestic consumers will be hurt by this 
policy. Again, it's the area defined by the difference in the price over to the demand curve. So domestic consumers will be facing higher prices because they have to compete with foreign consumers plus the payment by the government. Domestic producers are going to in, have an increase in producer surplus. That's the area defined by the difference in the price over the supply curve. That's that area A, B, C, D, E. So they clearly like this. And now we have an impact on the government. And this is going to be equal to the level of new exports, which is the difference between Q4 and Q3, and the subsidy rate, which is the vertical distance between PW and PW plus S. In other words, that's going to be equal to B, C, D, E, I. That's the exports, Q4 to Q3, multiplied times the subsidy rate. So now we've got gains, we've got losses, and now we do the, the simple uh, canceling of gains and losses. And what we're left with in the small country is that the net effect is B plus I. Those are deadweight losses. Those are losses beyond any gains that were received by different groups in, in the society. So once again, we can interpret these. They have It's not just an area on a graph. It has a very intuitive explanation from um, uh, uh, with just a little bit of analysis. So we have an increase in the amount of exports that comes at the at the um, uh, at the cost of consumers, domestic consumers. That Q1 to Q3 is now sold abroad. So area F the, is the world price multiplied times the quantity, and so that's the the revenue you get from selling this abroad. How much did domestic consumers value this? It's the area under the demand curve. It's B plus F. So what you have is that there is a net loss of B. That is to say, the amount earned from abroad is not, is, is exceeded by the loss to the domestic uh, consumers. Now I should note here that the from the firm standpoint, they don't get just F. They get F plus the subsidy. But we're looking at just what you actually earn from a, uh, on sales abroad. And that's how much foreigners pay, not what you, how much you get uh, from uh, as a check from the government. So the net effect is B. And essentially, this is because the export subsidy means that the, the domestic firm is selling to the wrong firms, or at least to the wrong consumers. They're selling to international consumers artificially because of the subsidy rather than the domestic consumers who value it more and are willing to pay more. You also have an increase in domestic production from Q2 to Q4. That is a result of the increase in the price uh, associated with the, uh, uh, with the exports. So, We've got export revenue associated, associated with that. That's Q2 to Q4. It's the box, the world price times the quantity. How much did it cost to produce that? That's the area under the supply curve. That's area IH. So the total, should say total variable production cost, is the area under the supply curve IH. So that you have a net loss from those exports. That is to say, I. That is the excess of domestic production costs over what you truly earned from these sales abroad. Not including the, the check from the government, which again is just a transfer between uh, uh, domestic taxpayers through the government to producers. That's not part of the calculus. So we have these two areas, B and I. And just to, uh, to uh, summarize that again, B is the cost of selling 
the product internationally instead of selling it to the domestic consumer. I is the inefficient production that is artificially allowed to occur because of the subsidy.